Okay, this is a video for the letter A, or the artist formerly known as Neat Pete. And I must apologise to you, Pete, because the reason for the delay in the video is uh, I managed to delete all the files on the camera. Then I spent ages, a few days, trying to get them back using photo recovery software, that kind of a stuff. And I found all but the first part, so it actually means I can condense things quite a lot. But what you're going to end up seeing is the... <laughs> this cell here being made. It's now several days later, which I guess is a, a, a good little update in a way. It's running along quite nicely, just running an oscillator, but you will see it running a motor. Anyway, point being was about the baking soda. And uh, what I do is I use equal quantities of baking soda, Epsom salt, and then put it in some water. So in terms of quantities for a large sized pills bottle, there's about, let's see now, this is all just very rough. Around about that for your baking soda, and the same again. So a heaped teaspoon, tablespoon, is it, of each, and then add water to it, and then put it into the microwave for about 20 seconds to dissolve the stuff, and uh, then the video picks up, and you'll see the completion of this cell being made. But the other bit I was talking about uh, was this cell here, which has just got water in it. It's uh, Nephilim Penny, and it's been running continuously since November 2011. Uh, this one here started running in December 2012, again running continuously. That's carbon and lead, and that uses Epsom salts and water. Uh, the thing was, and the whole thing about this is to try and find another cell which is more environmentally friendly and less toxic, as it were, than lead, but has got a heck of a lot more output than just using water. So. I'll carry on now with, um, well, the building of this. Alright, so let's give it a stir up with a straw. More fizzing ensues. Then I'm going to um, put one of these rods in and cut a piece of the galvanized steel and then uh, put them through the top of the cap and I'll be back when I've done that. So, the graphite and the steel next. Alright, so there's the two pieces in the top of the lid there. Next thing I'll do is just get a reading. I never did that with the first one. Of um, what the actual voltage is without being charged, if there is anything on it between the difference in the metals. Uh, so, let's connect up and have a look. Hopefully there is some, and hopefully that will explain. Mind you, my leads aren't very good. Right, hopefully that will explain why that one's able to carry on and uh, and not go anywhere. Right, so hang on, just give me a second. Okay. And the difference between them, well, look at this. 0.93, ah, and climbing, interestingly enough, um, is the difference between the two metals. So with that mixture uncharged, you're looking at pretty much a volt. And that's enough to run one of those oscillators forever in the same way as the one behind the carbon lead. So, uh, right, that's good to know. Uh, next thing, I'll get this thing charged up. Alright, so this is the voltage again, pretty much a volt. And what I'm going to do now is charge up with this 12 volt pack of lithium ions. Very, very old from a 1990s laptop, but anyway, they hold about 12 volts. Just got to charge this for about two minutes. And then, uh, well, I'll start it charging up. I'll just, uh, well, I'll just stick this to the the positive. And uh, well, in fact, we're a lot less. Well, are we though? That's coming down now, is it? Um, in a similar way to the um, Bedini SSG kind of things do. When it drops down, we said six and a half there. I haven't charged this pack actually, so I'm not sure what it started out at, but this should work. Um, and anyway, so what happened was quite some time ago, I was experimenting with graphite and realized that if I stick a big charge to it, a couple of amps sort of stuff, um, a very fine film, a mist, develops in the liquid and then uh, it ends up as this stuff which was actually spongy, it was really weird, while it was pr uh, properly wet with the um, you know, in suspension or whatever, it was like rubbery. I went to see what the resistance was across it which was very very low which reminded me of at least uh, graphitic oxide and uh, it was bouncing, the probe was bouncing on the bubbles. Oh, just a very, very weird thing. 
and now it's all dried out uh, that's the kind of stuff that was left and that was just a, a short while charging away and they've got amperage so I don't quite know but this does something similar and you can see in the other one over there maybe see um, that it does actually fall to the bottom it doesn't stay in suspension I don't know what it is it might not be very uh, very good for it but <laughs> anyway so uh, take it off charge now see where we're at and we are similar to the other one although this one's coming down a little more heavily it should end up around about two volts and what sort of current output does it have <laughs> there we are it's not bad is it Oops. so there we go hopefully that was useful to you and uh, yeah I think it's not not a bad battery cell at all that one hopefully it'll join those three okay thanks for watching Oh, and just to note, it only needs that 12 volts the once. Uh, the rest of the times can be on solar or whichever other ways of uh, charging you want to use. So, there we are. So, kicking away quite nicely. There we are. Alright, so, thanks for watching.